Welcome to my library. <laughs> As you may or may not know, I just moved from London to Glasgow. I love Scotland so much. I have wanted to live here for years and years and I'm finally doing it and I'm really, really happy. But moving for me means moving books and I've moved around a lot. I've moved from city to city, country to country, and every single time I do, I offload dozens if not hundreds of books. I used to be a nomad and I would just travel around with a suitcase full of books and I'm kind of hoping that now I finally have a space where I can stop offloading books every so often and actually build myself a library. So join me on a bookshelf tour. Before I moved, I got rid of a lot of books, but this is what I have left and I am going to shelve all of these books and figure out how this library is gonna look. I'm gonna alphabetize them or color code them. I'm not really sure yet. So let's take a tour of my library, check out some of my favorite books, and gradually shelf this enormous mess. What you can see behind me is actually double layered. Every single stack of books has another stack of the same height behind it, and all of my comic books are actually on the floor next to me because I think I have a separate place I want to put them. And then there's my TBR, which is currently in three separate stacks just over here. There is a very tall paperback stack, a slightly shorter hardback stack, and an even smaller review copy stack. I'm not gonna show you that because it's shameful. For some reason, I feel kind of embarrassed by my enormous TBR, so we'll just leave that. But before I get into any of that, just as a kind of side note, there's probably gonna be a lot of teething going on here. This is a brand new setup, it's a brand new room, it's a brand new flat. There's gonna be noise outside, there's gonna be neighbors walking around. I'm using a different microphone and I'm pretty sure it's echoing a lot right now. Hopefully when I've shelved the books, that'll help. And when I filled this room with a bit more furniture, blah, 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 just bear with me. If the lighting is bad, if the audio is bad, that's all gonna get ironed out gradually, okay? Just give me a little time and we'll figure all of that out because I'm a real nerd for getting my audio and my lighting right. When it's not right, it annoys me way more than it annoys you. So let's hope this looks and sounds okay. This is also the first time I've ever made a video standing up other than a travel video. I think I might keep this. I think I'm gonna stand up from now on. Standing up is fun. I feel like a weather girl. Okay, let's figure out how I'm going to shelf all of these books and how they're going to go and what order they're going to go in and blah blah blah. Let's, let's figure this shit out. If I'm going to be standing up in my videos from now on, this is basically the angle we're always going to have. So, I feel like I need my hardbacks to be on the top shelf because they're usually prettier. And I might get destroyed for this, but I have never ordered my books. I don't really like alphabetizing or color coding. In my last place, my partner color coded some of my books a little bit, but I don't really care. <laughs> So I'm trying to figure out now if I should care for you and for my own sake and for aesthetics, I don't know. But also once all of these stacks are actually gone and they're in their place, I'm gonna need to decorate up here. So maybe I'll display like my favorite books. I'll put Frankenstein on display up here. That looks nice, right? And a few others. And I've got plushies. I've got cute stuff I can, I'll figure it out. Hardbacks, hardbacks first. Let's do, let's do hardbacks. <laughs> Even though I did make videos about these books, I don't think I talk about just how much I love the works of Stuart Turton, so these are kind of gonna go pride of place. I read The Devil in Dark Water first, and then I really wanted to get the hardback of Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I managed to do. And he's got a third book coming out, I think next year, and I'm very, very excited. He's such a sweet, lovely guy, and yeah, these gotta go somewhere special. I've only just realized that with this camera angle, the hardbacks I've shelled so far, you can't even see them. Well, they look nice, just in case you were wondering. I've got a lot of dark hardbacks, and I like that. I approve of that. I think all of these I bought within the last year as well. You got Babel, Grady Hendrix novel. I actually got rid of one of his, I think, when I was packing up. Now I regret it. Anyway, this one's my favorite anyway, so. Kirsty Logan, Kirsty Logan lives in Glasgow. Fun fact. And Diary of Blood. S.T. Gibson has a new book coming out next year. Look forward to that. Okay. That works. I can see myself if that's not clear. This is Hellebore. This is a really, really cool magazine that comes out every few months. And it's all about like occult and gothic and weird history. And I've only ever read issue one and I keep meaning to buy the rest, but they're really cool. There's an article in here about Stonehenge and it's 
gorgeous. This is a book I've never talked about ever, and I really, really like it. It's quite shiny because it's still wrapped in this plastic. I bought it in Bath at Topping & Co years ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. This is back when I lived in Bristol, and they wrap a lot of their books in this plastic, and I just never took it off. Anyway, The North Water's really, really fun. Hilary Mantel liked it. One huge regret I have from this year is that I didn't review this book. Like, I read it and I loved it, but I didn't do a formal review of it. This is Our Hideous Progeny by C.E. McGill, and it's a kind of spiritual sequel to Frankenstein. I got this finished copy for review, and I didn't review it, and I feel really bad about that. This is a great book. So it goes pride of place. Okay, running out of hardbacks, so that's good. Did a video on this recently. Really good. I cannot, I cannot stick to a color scheme. I can't, no, there is no plan. This is going out the window, this is annoying. I need a thin hardback. That's nice, right? One thing I'm kind of trying to do is keep all my authors together. Like, I'm not alphabetizing them, but here I've got two hardcovers from T. Kingfisher and they need to stay together. Luckily, they're the same size and they look really nice together. Oh my God, we're getting there. Okay, this is really exciting. This is really, really cool. I have a library. I mean, it's a corner. I don't know if a corner is a library, but there's a big window here, and I'm gonna put a desk under it. That'd be nice. I love Lauren Groff, and I have her newest book, The Vaster Wilds, on my TBR, and I'm gonna read it very, very soon. She's awesome. Fun fact about me, I love Neil Gaiman. I think, no, no, I know, Neil Gaiman is my most read author ever, which isn't difficult because He's written a lot. So when I was in my late teens, early 20s, and I was really getting into reading and becoming a bookworm, Neil Gaiman was there for me. And I think I've read everything he's ever written, and that includes all of his comics as well. Like, because of the sheer number of things he's written, and just how much of a fan I was like 10 years ago, I don't think I'll ever read any more books by any one person. Neil Gaiman will always remain my most read author. <laughs> And I'm starting to think about where to put my favorites, like this whole pride of place thing. This is Little by Edward Carey, and this is one of my favorite books of all time. I think I'm about ready to do a top five books list, just to kind of clarify what my top five favorite books are, even though I've put that off forever because they change. People's favorite books change all the time. But this is there. This is in my top five. I need to talk about it. So do I put it sort of pride of place somewhere on top, or do I shelf it? I'm just gonna leave it for a sec. Okay, so I have run out of hardbacks. So it looks like my hardbacks span all the top row. Cool. But I was kind of hoping to build a shrine to Laura Purcell. I have all of her books in hardback. I love her. She is my historical gothic horror queen. Historical fiction, gothic fiction, and horror are my favorite genres. And she does all of that in one thing. Every book of hers is historical gothic horror. I love her so much, but I need to use her books to finish this row of hardback. So I'll figure out other stuff to put on top. I actually just found another one. This is Strega. This is by Joanna Leica Holm, and I really wish I'd done a video on this as well. This is another regret that I didn't do a dedicated video on Strega. I'll probably reread it at some point because it's fantastic. This is another gothic horror twisted feminist thing that I absolutely loved. If you haven't read Strega, it's a Swedish novel translated by Saskia Vogel, and it is absolutely wonderful. Published by Lolly, who are such a great indie publisher. Check this book out. <laughs> In case you didn't know, I narrated the audiobook of this. I think I've talked about it a lot, but it bears repeating. 
Really hoping to do more audiobook recording soon. I like it. My experience of recording this audiobook was amazing, so I'm kind of wondering where this goes now. I think it's another one I'm gonna have to leave on the top for now. One massive hardback I forgot to shelf. It was just staring me in the face. This thing's huge, it's amazing, it's wonderful. I almost got rid of it just because of its size and weight when we were moving, but I couldn't bring myself to get rid of this book. Our Share of Night is an absolute masterpiece. Go check out my review if you haven't already. <laughs> Pro's done. This is all my hardcovers. Obviously, I, as I said, I have a massive hardcover TBR, and I'm kind of hoping that I'm gonna do a one-in-one-out situation. I'm gonna fill all of this library. I'm gonna fill other bookshelves, bookcases dotted around the flat, but I'd like to be able to keep things reasonable, buy a book, shelf a book, maybe think about a book I could swap it out for and sell it, give it to charity, give it to a friend, something. I need to maintain my book collection. This is a cool thing I have. My partner gave me this. This is kind of a, an easel. It's a display board for books. So I think I'm gonna put it behind me and maybe whatever book I'm reviewing or talking about, I can just place on it and that'll be real nice. Eh? Thanks for it, didn't it? Also, as I said, I have a lot of comic books or, well, at least I used to. About 10 years ago, long before I started Books and Bow, I used to be an enormous collector of comic books, both in paperback and hardback, in what you call trades, and also single issues that I collect every single week. I got rid of all my single issues years ago when I moved to Bristol from Japan. So when I was in Japan, I left them at my parents' house, I think, and then I moved to Bristol, I got them and brought them all with me, and then I sold them all because I didn't have a job and I needed to pay my first month's rent. And then all of the trade paperback and hardbacks, I've slowly gotten rid of over time, and now I have two small piles of hardcover and paperback comic books by my feet here. But I think I'm ready to start collecting again. There's this small independent comic book shop in the West End of Glasgow that I've already visited and chatted with the guy there. He's really, really sweet. And I think maybe if this is gonna be my base, if I feel kind of settled and like I have a library, maybe I can start collecting and reading comics again. Maybe I can do a few videos on comics now and again. I'm a huge Batman fan and I would absolutely love to rebuild my Batman comics collection. Just in case you want some proof, Here's a few of them. Batman the Black Mirror was, I think, the first Batman comic that Scott Snyder ever worked on, and I still absolutely love this. This is back when Dick Grayson was Batman because everyone thought Bruce Wayne was dead. And this is drawn by Jock, who is a Scottish comic book artist. And I love this thing. I need to reread this. This is a cool thing. This is Batman Hush, which was by Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee, an amazing legendary comic book. And what's interesting about this version is this is Hush Unwrapped, which involves no inking, no colors. It's just the sketches. It's just Jim Lee's art in its rawest form. It's not actually that pleasant to read because it's not done, but it's still really, really cool to have. So I've never gotten rid of it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get back into comics and I think you'll see a few videos about comics soon. Right, I'm gonna fast forward through shelving all of my paperbacks and then decide what the display over my shoulders here is gonna look like when it's all done. Okay, this is roughly where we're at now. I've got the easel thingy to display books. That's nice. I've got a few favorites here and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. I still kind of want to do my Laura Purcell shrine. They're here right now, and I'm wondering about putting them, I don't know. Ah, this is getting stressful. <laughs> and I kind of want to display this somewhere, not just because it's the first audiobook I narrated, but just because I'm queer and this is a really important book to me. Hmm, hmm. I think I need plushies. I've probably mentioned this before, but if you ever go to Bath in England, go to the Frankenstein Center. No, House of Frank- House of Frankenstein. I think that's what it's called, the House of Frankenstein. In the gift shop, they sell these Frankenstein's monster teddy bears. And of course, I just called this guy Frank. I initially put him on the mantelpiece in our living room, but I feel like he needs to be in these videos. Yep, yep, I immediately love that. When my partner and I first met, they actually got me a pair of plague doctors. I can't remember what I called the girl one, but I named this one after William Gladstone for some reason. So this is Gladstone. I think I'm gonna put him next to Frank. Oh yeah, that's real cute. Okay, I like that. I also have this gorgeous piece of art and my friend Jess, the co-owner of Books and Bow, bought this during the pandemic. She's a French artist and she draws really cool fantasy, medieval, witchy, whatever inspired stuff. It's really, really cute. I love this piece of art. Jess gave it to me to keep 
when they move to LA. I think I'll display this. Okay, I'll put it there for now, we'll see how it goes. And then, like I said, I've got a few favorites that I could put up maybe in display. I'm gonna think about it. Maybe this, maybe I'll smush everything together a little bit. I don't know, but we're getting there. Okay, <laughs> for now, let's tentatively call this complete. Like I said, this is my new filming spot. If it's echoey, if the lighting sucks, blah, 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 I'll get that sorted out, I'll figure it out, work in progress. But this is my library and I love it. Like I said, I think pretty soon I'm gonna do a video on my top five books, we'll see. And I'm still not sure about the whole standing up thing, we'll, we'll work on that, but this looks cute, right? Nice, well, thanks for joining me. Also, by the way, moving is really, really expensive. So if you wanna join my Patreon and support me, you are very welcome to. I would love your support. And as always, Subscribe for books.